Miss Melinda here, your spiritual advisor from MissMelinda.com, here to bring you part three in our series on shadow work with the Tarot. So let's briefly go over what we mean by shadow work. In my personal definition of shadow work, I am referring to shadow material that is buried material within our subconscious or unconscious mind that our ego has determined is not useful for us or is not beneficial to us or has determined as something we cannot handle or should not face. So shadow material is repressed aspects of ourselves that becomes destructive and that prevents us from making decisions that are in our best interest and decisions that it can allow us more personal freedom, more personal expression, more fulfillment, more joy, and so forth. Essentially, when we repress aspects of ourselves, we are also repressing our own ability to be fully happy and fully engaged. This is a very brief overview of what shadow work is and a very brief overview of how I'm approaching shadow work within this video series. When we're talking about using the tarot cards to assist us with shadow work, we're talking about using the tarot as a tool to point us towards that hidden material. What is hidden from ourselves, what we hide from ourselves about ourselves, about our own behaviors, about our patterns in life, about our own self-destruction, what we don't want to see or what is difficult and challenging to see about ourselves and what will be useful for us to become aware of and to see more clearly in order to gain growth and in order to gain deeper fulfillment, joy, and connection in life. So I have a few cards here and we're going to start digging in with the Emperor card. If the Emperor card comes up in your shadow work, the Emperor may very well be pointing towards control issues. The shadow side of the Emperor is all about control, controlling details, controlling people around you, controlling relationships. It can point towards OCD-like behavior, over-analysis, over-planning, over-scheduling, a type A personality to the extreme. So what the emperor may be telling you in terms of shadow work is that you need to relax. You need to stop controlling. Perhaps your relationship problem is because you're trying to mold that person in what you, into what you want them to be. Perhaps you're trying to control every detail of your relationship and that's why there are problems there. Perhaps you're having problems at work because you are over scheduling, over analyzing, you're micromanaging, you're going over every detail perhaps perfectionism is the issue. Perhaps you're having problems relaxing and letting go in life because a lack of faith is causing you to want control over every aspect of your life. The Emperor card is very much pointing towards control issues which you may be reluctant to see. The Three of Swords is obviously pointing towards heartbreak pain, personal loss, devastation. However, in your shadow work, the three of swords would be pointing towards pain that you are unwilling to face. This could mean that there is a relationship from the past or a loss or difficulty from the past which you haven't healed from and which you have tried to bury or forget. It could also mean that you are trying to ignore your current feelings, that you are currently trying to bury your pain or loss and um, divorce yourself from it rather than being fully present with your feelings. So one of the big messages that would come forward with the Three of Swords is that you need to be present with your feelings, especially your pain. You need to move through it if you want to grow, if you want to heal. The Star card is our next card and there is indeed a shadow side to the star card and that is of idealism with the star card it can often mean especially in shadow work it would mean that we have set our ideals too high that they are unrealistic that they're unachievable that we are continually setting ourselves up for failure 
because our ideals are just unrealistic or unachievable. Um, the star card could be pointing towards you being destructive with yourself, um, not being able to achieve anything that makes you happy because you feel that you have to achieve something that is perfect or you have to achieve something that is better than everyone else, something that is higher than everything else. And the star card is telling you, you need to recognize, you need to realize what's realistic, what's achievable, and what's not. Bring yourself down to earth a little. And while you're at it, ask yourself why you're setting yourself up for this disappointment, why you're setting yourself up for this constant loss, this constant feeling of not being able to achieve your desires, right? So this would be something that would require you to dig deeper as well. And the cards around the star card may assist you with that maybe pointing you towards the cause of your idealism or pointing you towards that idealism really um, being a destructive element in your life. The next card is the Tower card. The Tower card is often about chaos, right? It's about um, huge challenges that kind of turn our life upside down and force us to see things differently. The Star card, the tower card carries with it the message that the reason tumultuous change has to occur in our lives is for the purpose of dislodging old beliefs, dislodging old mindsets and old world views, shaking things up for us mentally so that we can be open, so that we can be more awake, so that we can see things more clearly. So the Tower card could actually come in as a warning in your shadow work and tell you that you need to see things differently now if you want to avoid your whole life being turned upside down, if you want to avoid the universe having the need to kind of step in for you and change your mindset and put you on the right path. It can also very much be pointing towards the fact that it is within your beliefs, within your mindset, that things need to change. It can be telling you that you tend to see change as a catastrophe when it doesn't have to be a catastrophe. The Tower card can be telling you that what's really happening in your life is that your mindset is changing. The world isn't ending. The sky isn't falling. Your mindset or your beliefs or your perceptions are simply changing and that they need to do so in order for you to have that growth. The biggest thing I would look out for with the Tower card is that warning that it's time for you to see things differently, time for you to let go of old ideas, old perceptions, old worldviews so that you don't have to come face to face with some kind of major loss or wait until some kind of force from the outside comes in and transforms your life. And this is another card that will very much be informed by the cards around it. They would point towards where those changes need to take place within your beliefs or what those mindsets may relate to. The Four of Swords is the next card. The Four of Swords is about emotional and physical and mental exhaustion. And the Four of Swords may be telling you that there's something you're not seeing about this pattern of exhaustion you're experiencing. Perhaps there is a physical ailment or perhaps you are consistently becoming inundated with stress to the point that you're incapacitated. The Four of Swords may be asking you to analyze that stress pattern more closely, to think about your relationship to stress, to see if there is a bigger issue there. Perhaps the Four of Swords is telling you, you need to change your life in order to change this stress pattern. Perhaps the Four of Swords is telling you, there's something bigger going on. This isn't normal stress. This isn't normal exhaustion. Pay attention to what's going on with yourself emotionally and mentally. Do you need to make a change with your job? Do you need to make a change in your life? Is there something that's perpetually bogging you down or you're doing something that you really truly don't want to be doing? And that's why you're becoming so exhausted. That's why you're becoming so depleted. 
So the Four of Swords with shadow work is definitely going to be pointing towards those patterns of exhaustion in your life. And that will be kind of a clue to what you need to look at in order to dig deeper into your shadow material what needs to be changed, what is really causing that exhaustion. It's something that you haven't been wanting to admit to or that you haven't been wanting to take notice of, something that you have been reluctant to change. And now the Four of Swords is here to tell you it's time to change that pattern. The Eight of Swords very much about shadow work. The Eight of Swords is here to tell you that you are definitely keeping things from yourself, that you have been reluctant to see your own patterns of behavior, that you've been reluctant to see your own flaws, that you've been reluctant to take responsibility in your relationships with others and in your relationship with the world around you. The Eight of Swords is saying you have blinders on when it comes to yourself, your behaviors, your patterns, and the way in which you are behaving in the world. The Eight of Swords is telling you you're refusing to see yourself for who you really are or what you really are. You're refusing to see your flaws. You're not taking responsibility. It's time to take the blindfold off. Listen to what other people are telling you. If, you, if there is a specific pattern that keeps coming up in your relationships, in your personal relationships, or in your work-life relationships, or in your family relationships, for example, and you just can't see why these things are happening, then the Eight of Swords is here to tell you that it's because it's you and that you refuse to see your own flaws or your own responsibilities or your own roles in these situations. The Eight of Swords is here to say, take a close look at the challenges that you continually face. Take a close look at those patterns that are playing out in your life and see what the constant is. The constant is you. How are you behaving in those situations? When you take that blindfold off and you become willing to see yourself as a full person with flaws just like everybody else, when you become willing to see those flaws and accept those flaws, that's when you'll be able to be released from your bondage. The Six of Wands is our next and last card. The Six of Wands is an interesting card and in shadow work, it would be telling you that you think that you need to do the right thing, but what you are really doing is taking the high road. So in other words, the Six of Wands is about you placing yourself above other people. For example, rather than just doing the right thing, you have considered what the right thing is and that you must always do the right thing. There's a difference between those two mindsets. The Six of Wands is here to tell you that other people see you as being on a high horse, that other people feel that you're putting yourself above them, that you they see you perpetually and consciously taking the high road, placing yourself above others. Instead of dealing with things on a humanistic level, instead of dealing with things on an interpersonal level or on a compassionate level, you're always thinking about what is the right thing to do and how can I take the moral high ground rather than actually dealing with things from an emotional perspective, from a relationship perspective. The Six of Wands is here to tell you that other people around you are reacting negatively towards you taking the high ground and that they see you as somebody who is placing yourself above them. It's a good time to take a look at those challenges in your life and to take a look at those patterns in your life specifically pertaining to moral decisions and the importance that you place upon being morally right being morally accurate or being seen as ethical? Is this about how other people see you or is this because you it's really important to you to do the right thing? Are you making your decisions based on how you feel about your relationships and based on your care for the people around you? Or are you making your decisions based upon how you want other people to see you and how you want to be perceived? 
Is this about being right? Or is this about caring for others, right? Okay, be blessed, everybody. Don't forget to like the video and comment and share. Be well.